Hello student. Today we're going to continue our comparison of the exocrine and endocrine system. We've looked at the exocrine system already. There are two major differences between these two systems and I want to point those out. So let's look back at our previous lecture. This is what we did before, the exocrine versus the endocrine glands. And our take home message here is right here. The, the glands themselves are ducted and the chemicals that are secreted by the exocrine glands they're non-messenger chemicals. They don't send a chemical from the exocrine cell to a target cell. When the chemicals are secreted, they just do their job in that location. Now let's continue with the endocrine glands. So we're going to start out with an endocrine cell. So I'm going to draw an endocrine cell first. Here we have our endocrine cell. Within the endocrine cell, we've drawn a secretory vesicle. Now, as you can see, once the secretory vesicle fuses with the membrane, the hormone will now be outside of the cell. When the hormone exits the cell, it does not really go into the tissue fluid. It goes directly into the blood vessel. So let's show how that happens. Here we have our blood vessel. Now, the blood vessel is very closely associated with the endocrine cells. Now, this blood vessel is actually a capillary. And what happens with these capillaries, I'm going to zoom in right here. The membrane of the capillary is very thin, and hormones can diffuse out of the extracellular fluid almost directly into the vessel. So I'm going to indicate the thinness of the membrane here. So this membrane we is very thin. And because it's so thin, the hormone can diffuse directly across the membrane of the capillary. Now the hormone travels through the circulatory system and into all the tissues of the body, all over the body. So we're going to represent the body here. So this is a crude representation of the body. And within the body, you can have different types of cells. The cell here, and they have a receptor of this shape on it. It's like a square-shaped receptor. This cell here may have a receptor that has a, a round shape. The cell, this cell here may have no receptor at all. And this cell here, which we're drawing very big because this will be the cell of interest, may have a receptor that looks like a triangle that fits our particular hormone. And so what happens in the body, the hormone will move to this receptor and then we'll find out, well, it can't bind to that receptor move to this cell and it can't bind to this cell then it will move on it keeps moving all throughout the body finds out that it can't bind to that cell moves to this cell here can't bind to that receptor then it eventually moves to the cell that has the triangular shape and it does bind to this one once the hormone binds to the particular cell that fits it a signal is passed across the cell membrane And a second molecule is created. Another molecule is created, and we call that molecule a second messenger. And when that second messenger molecule is formed, it leads to the initiation of a cascade of events that ultimately results in the physiological response. So we get a cascade of events here, which leads to the physiological response. This cascade of events is known as the signal transduction pathway. Now let's define a few terms here. That's everything except for the differences. We haven't identified those yet. Okay, the cell here is known as, this is the endocrine cell or the producer cell. Here we have the secretory vesicle. Within the secretory vesicle, is our hormone. 
Now the secretory vesicle fuses with the membrane. So we're just going to put it fuses or joins with the membrane. Now here we have our blood vessel. Now what happens, the blood vessels actually pass through the endocrine tissue and it forms very small blood vessels called capillaries which have a very thin membrane that allows the hormone to pass into the bloodstream. So these are capillaries or this is a capillary here. The surface molecules on the cells themselves. And so here, this is a surface molecule. That surface molecule is called a receptor. In the case of a hormone, the chemical that binds to the receptor is the hormone, but the general name for a chemical that binds to a receptor is a ligand. So here, in this specific case, the hormone is also a ligand. So the hormone is a ligand. And so we'll put a ligand. So that's the general. So this is the hormone again. Now, since the hormone initiates this entire message, the hormone is also called the first messenger or the primary messenger. And so we'll indicate that here. The hormone is the first messenger or the primary, primary messenger. messenger. And so basically, this is the overview of the endocrine system or the endocrine glands. So what's the difference between the endocrine system and the exocrine system? Let's indicate those two differences here. First, in the endocrine system, the glands themselves are ductless. There are no ducts, as in the exocrine system. Secondly, in the endocrine system, the chemicals that are produced are messenger chemicals. They pass into the bloodstream, go to a target at a distant site, and exert their action on a target cell. And so, the chemicals are messenger chemicals. And so, this concludes our comparison of the exocrine and endocrine systems. I hope you learned a lot.